Have you ever found yourself in the same negative cycle where you keep doing the same thing over and over again and you can't seem to get yourself out of this habit? In today's video, I'm gonna talk about one of the most powerful tools that can help you to recognize how you're getting caught in this cycle and what you can do about it. The thought feeling action cycle is a concept from the world of psychology, specifically cognitive behavioral therapy, that explains how our thoughts, our emotions, and our behaviors are all interconnected and they all influence one another. There are a ton of different definitions of thoughts. Some people think of them as cognitive processes in our minds. Some people think of them as our belief systems. For others, their interpretations, judgments, or analyses. On this channel, I talk about our thoughts as being part of a larger narrative or story, but the most useful way to think about them is thoughts are sentences in your mind. Most people don't slow down enough to pay attention to the individual thoughts that are generating specific emotions and leading to particular actions. Emotions, or the feelings part of the thought feeling action cycle, are affective responses that occur in reaction to the thoughts we are having. On the most foundational level, I like to think about the emotions from the Pixar movie Inside Out because because they do such a great job of showing the essential core emotions of joy, sadness, fear slash anxiety, anger, and what is called disgust in the movie, but I would actually probably label that disgust or shame, which is more like a self-disgust. An important step along the way is to process those emotions because if we don't process them, they build up in our system and we will keep recreating the same cycle through those same thought, feeling, action, patterns. So if you've never processed an emotion before, I invite you to check out this video up here, which walks you through in a guided meditation, how to allow an emotion and to actually feel it rise and then fall and move through your body. This can work for any emotion that you're experiencing, and it's particularly helpful for emotions that are getting in the way of other things you'd like to do with your life. So this is a great tool for people who are feeling anxious, who are feeling sad, who are feeling shame, like rejection. Take a look at this guided meditation and see if you can use it to allow these emotions and really feel the sensations in your body and see the magic of process Processing your emotions before moving on to the next step. Very few people are in tune with the emotions that arise as a result of these thoughts. So all of these things are happening on this almost subconscious underlying level. And the one thing we are able to recognize is our response, AKA our actions. Actions are the behaviors that result in response to the combination of thought and feeling that we are experiencing. These can be physical actions that we take, they can be verbal reactions, and this also includes a category of inactions, which is very common, the things that we don't do as a result of feeling specific emotions. If you're curious to learn more about the relationship between emotions and procrastination, you can check out this video series. When we are not acting consciously, which is a lot more of the time than we're willing to admit most of the time, we are driven by our emotions. And so whenever we take actions, there's an underlying emotion, which was often generated by a specific thought that we have about some circumstance in our lives. But what happens with a lot of people is because they can recognize the action that they want to change, they try to change things at the root of taking action. When we try to change ourselves and change our experiences and even change our emotions by taking actions, we are cutting off the first two layers of this process and that's just not going to work. It might work in the moment when we actively choose to not do something, but it's very likely that we have reinforced that thought feeling without the response at the end and there 
therefore we're going to see that thought feeling action cycle return. An example of this is something I see all the time with my writing students. Many of them have the unconscious and sometimes even conscious belief that they are terrible writers. The emotion that that brings up for them might be anywhere from anxiety, although I would argue it's probably more like shame and anxiety shows up when they have a thought about an upcoming assignment. That thought might look something like, I'm going to fail or I'm going to get a bad grade. That feeling of shame makes us want to avoid. Generally speaking, we avoid things that bring about emotions like anxiety and shame. And therefore, the student wouldn't seek out opportunities on how to improve their writing, like visiting the campus writing center, going to the professor's office hours, reading over their feedback on a rough draft in order to see what they need to improve upon. All of those avoidance behaviors only serve to reinforce the thought, I'm bad at writing. On the other hand, once we become aware of the thought feeling action cycle, and we recognize that we want to take different actions such as visiting the writing center, talking to our professor, reading over our notes, or getting started on our assignment early so that we have plenty of time to write and revise our essay, then we need to go all the way back to what thought could I think that would generate a different emotion and therefore lead to a different action. I always like to encourage using what are often referred to as more neutral thoughts. It's really difficult to go from I'm terrible at writing to I'm a great writer or I'm the next great American novelist. Most of the time, it's just not gonna ring true and our bodies are actually really good lie detectors. So if it doesn't sort of resonate, then it's not something that we're going to be able to use to change our thought feeling action cycle. Neutral thoughts could be something like, writing is just putting words on the page. Technically speaking, it's true. I don't feel any resistance to that thought even when I'm otherwise having some anxiety about whatever writing project I'm working on. Writing is just putting words on a page, that's all. When I practice on purpose, thinking the thought, writing is just putting words on the page, the feeling that I have is relaxed. And the actions that I take is I get out my computer, I open up a new Word document, and I put some words on the page. And every time I do that, I'm reinforcing this new thought that writing is just putting words on the page. And over time, through the power of neuroplasticity, we can rewire our brains away from the thought that is not serving us and towards the thought that leads to the types of emotions we'd like to feel and cultivate in our lives and the actions we take as a result of feeling those more positive emotions. If you wanna understand more about how you can rewire your brain through the power of writing a new story, then click the link below and join my newsletter to learn more about this fascinating topic. Learning the thought, feeling, action tool has completely transformed my life. I'm able to identify the specific thoughts that I'm having that are causing the emotions that were causing me a lot of difficulties in my life. And I was able to recognize how to change my behaviors by going all the way back to the original thought, feeling, action cycle, and then rewiring my brain to do things differently. And it is the most powerful tool for showing you more about your mind and helping you to feel more empowered to make some changes. Thanks for watching.